we are here at the second Dollar Tree today because the first one I went to was like mysteriously closed. Anyways, I'm here. Give this video a thumbs up if you like Dollar Tree Shop With Me videos. We're gonna check out the skincare here. I'm over in the Halloween section. Styrofoam pumpkins, in case you were wondering. Looks like the DT got in some new hair care. Dermacil now has a shampoo. There are quite a few things that can cause scalp sensitivity. One of them is if you use a lot of heat styling tools, can actually aggravate the skin of your scalp. Or if you wear really tight hairstyles, the more frequently you can shampoo your scalp, the better for the health of your scalp. Uh, because infrequent shampooing can lead to a lot of oiliness and kind of overgrowth of that little yeast malassezia and ultimately that contributes to dandruff, scalp itch, and scalp discomfort. So that's a little bit about shampoo but this particular one from Dermacil, you know it does have the methyl isothiazolinone preservative which a lot of Dollar Tree products have. It's a preservative that frequently can lead to the development of contact dermatitis. Looks like they have a matching conditioner too. Shampoo and conditioner is one of those very nebulous territories in that people will often ask like what are good ingredients to look for or what ingredients should be avoided and truthfully there's no such list. Um, the formulation overall is really important for how the shampoo or conditioner is going to perform with your hair type. Now, some shampoos are marketed as clarifying shampoos. They have a stronger surfactant action and they're intended to remove buildup from the hair and scalp. So if you use a lot of styling products, it's a good idea to incorporate one of those like once a week to remove that buildup from the hair strands and from the scalp. Um, whereas gentle shampoos, they are often use very mild surfactants, but there's really not a ingredients to avoid type list. Certain ingredients get unnecessarily demonized like silicones, different surfactants, but truthfully the hair care products are safe. Whether or not they're going to perform well for you boils down to your hair type and the formulation of the product overall. So all that to say, if you have a shampoo and conditioner that you like and that works well for your hair, stick with it. Uh, don't let some random blog on the internet make you feel like a failure that you're using the wrong shampoo and conditioner. Speaking of clarifying shampoos, because the surfactant is harsher, I do recommend following it up with, at the very least, a conditioner, but a conditioning hair mask can be helpful in that case. This one, looks to be nice. Conditioning hair masks, they're sort of just like conditioner but extra thick <laughs> um, so that it coats more of the strands more evenly. Looks like Dermacil has a lightweight hair gel. Hair gels, if you wear really tight hairstyles and you're having problems with hair loss around the front of the frontal hairline, it could be related to traction. And if you wear hair gel to tame down the little flyaways that can dry out those little baby hairs, make them more vulnerable to breakage. These extra hold formulas of hairspray are often the culprit when it comes to contributing to breakage. So we're here in the uh, Where's Waldo miscellany. Yeah, what are these Freeman Micro Dart Pro? This is new. These micro darts always give me pause because it's bad enough if you develop an allergy or irritation to an ingredient or something. But if you have that ingredient under occlusion and then you're enhancing the penetration of it into the skin with these little micro darts that dissolve, it can really cause a lot of problems for you. Hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid, sodium hyaluronate, glycerin, pentapeptide 18, and palmitoyl tripeptide. These look pretty large. Like they would help plump up fine lines and wrinkles. These actually look kind of promising. Um, these ingredients are not common allergens, but anyway, that's interesting that they have those here. Ooh, this is new. Be Pure Sleep Lotion, lavender and chamomile. Lavender is an essential oil, so you, you can become allergic to it, but it is relaxing and tranquilizing. <laughs> I was hoping this would have melatonin in it, like the like the Gold Bond Overnight Cream, but I'm not seeing it. Otherwise, this looks promising as a scented body moisturizer. Oh my god, glitter masks? Why is this 
2016. No. Stay away from these. They're likely irritating. Ooh, these are new too from the B Pure line. Night eye gel pads, lavender and chamomile. Now, lavender around the delicate eyelid skin, more likely to be irritating. Chondrus crispus, that's hydrating, comes from algae. Lavender, again, fragrance can become allergic to. But I enjoy doing these gel pads, under eye gel pads. Um, I find that they help depuff. What is this? Calm, nourish, and hydrate. Here we have a scented cucumber eye cream with shea butter in it. Um, this I would not, I would not brush over to your Dollar Tree to get because honestly, you can just use a basic moisturizer around the eyes. This doesn't have anything in it that is going to offer a unique benefit to the eyelid skin, and if anything, the fragrance around the eyelids is more likely to cause problems there. So I would skip that. Check it out, you guys, a retinol eye cream. Um, now retinol, retinol face creams, sometimes they can be a little too harsh around the eyelid skin. I have a whole video talking about this, like using retinoids around the eyes or retinols, the risk of dry eyes, is it there, is it a problem? So check that video out for more details. But um, people like to use retinol for like crow's feet, um, and products that you use on your face that you buy over the counter with retinol, sometimes they can be too irritating, so they're retinol eye products. It has peptides in it. Those are going to have a hydrating effect. Royal Jelly Powder, that's going to be moisturizing and hydrating. This actually looks really promising. I don't, I can't speak to the efficacy of retinol, of the retinol in this, because retinol, it's an unstable ingredient, so it has to be formulated correctly, and I don't know how good the nobleman is. Is he noble? Um, but this is a winning gem otherwise. I bet this is a really hydrating product at the very least. It probably does temporarily improve the look of fine lines. And it doesn't have fragrance. Good stuff in here. You just have to, you just have to spend the time in this little section here. I think we talked about this Beauty Guru, Guru Facial Age Defying Serum the last time I was in here, and it's just basically scented oil, which you don't need. Oh, check this out. I have no idea what it is, but who remembers these Push Pops? This looks like too much fun. It's a Push Pop of Soap Confetti. Vanilla Peony Blossom Scented. Um... <laughs> You like pop this and these little soap hearts go all over the place. I'm not gonna lie, that sounds kind of fun. Pop it off. But no, that's not an endorsement for you to run to your nearest Dollar Tree and get soap hearts to clog your drain with. These I love, these little chill packs. This is something I buy here frequently actually. Not specifically the iPad ones, although these are really good to temporarily depuff the under eyes. Yeah, so these are really helpful, but they sell bigger ones here that are also really good if you get hives when you start having a flare up to just use as a cool compress. It'll help calm down the hives, keep them from like revving up too much. Assured Epsom salt foot gel. Cools, comforts, soaking alternative. Easy application. Easy for who? Some people have trouble reaching their feet. Peppermint oil and tea tree leaf oil. Now, tea tree leaf does have antifungal properties. You're less likely to develop problems with it on the thick skin of the soles of your feet, but it can still be a potential allergen. Dimethicone is good for reducing water loss. Castor oil is an emollient. DMDM hydantoin and iodopropanol butyl carbamate, those are preservatives. Not as likely to develop allergy to them, but you certainly can. DMDM hydantoin gets fear-mongered a lot on the internet. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, and I have a video explaining how it works, why it's not the devil, why it's perfectly fine, why it doesn't cause hair loss or any other, you know, life-altering issue. It's, it, it prevents bacteria from contaminating things, which generally is, is a good thing. This is the Dollar Tree that has the rust problem. <gasps> We're gonna look past that. I've filmed in here before and people always comment on the, the shelves. Body wash in a sponge, anti-cellulite. Okay, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about spongible. Okay, I don't know what this has, but it's, see, people will make claims about rubbing, like dry brushing or 
doing this circular massage stuff and cellulite and it's just not it because cellulite has to do with the orientation of the fibrous bands and how in, in women they're more likely to be oriented in such a way that women are prone to developing cellulite especially on the thighs it it's not a character flaw we should not demonize it as much as we do but in terms of improving it these kind of things they're not going to change things your best bet for a cost-free option if you're able is to work on building some muscle strength in that area because muscle will occupy space and just kind of smooth out the surface of the skin there are some body contouring procedures that can improve the appearance of it things like radio frequency microneedling but it, it's you know what it is caffeine which this has there's some idea that caffeine applied to cellulite might you know change the biology of the fat cells it's a really loosey-goosey claim um, i cover this in a video about caffeine creams but you'll often see caffeine included in these anti-cellulite type products bladder whack extract now that's going to be moisturizing <laughs> bladder rack argon oil sunflower seed oil fragrance petrolatum so you're going to wet the sponge to form a creamy lather, exfoliate and massage all over body, paying special attention to any areas that need a little TLC. This looks kind of rough too. Follow us on Instagram, official underscore spongibles. You should go, you should go hit them up on Instagram. Made in Anaheim, California. I'm actually kind of intrigued by this. Um, now this is new, this tea tree oil and salicylic acid balancing face wash. Again, to reiterate, tea tree oil, common allergen, because see, people get all excited like, oh, natural fragrance, it much, must be better. Synthetic fragrance is actually better because it's more purified and less likely to be sensitizing, whereas tea tree leaf oil it's going to be a mixed bag of various different things that are going to vary from like batch to batch, supplier to supplier, to what extent each batch is going to yield the same type of antifungal type properties, who knows. Anyways, it's there. Salicylic acid is great for um, seborrheic dermatitis on the face uh, or on the scalp if you're using a shampoo to treat your dandruff. Salicylic acid is obviously an acne treatment and good for like blackheads, closed comedones, or whiteheads. How much salicylic acid is in this? They don't disclose. Skin Beauty International, 12 months with an opening. Then we have a Freeman Anti-Stress Sea Salt Mud Mask. Um, clay, at least, like kaolin and bentonite, which this has, can help um, degrease the surface of the skin. If you're prone to acne breakouts, doing a clay mask a few times a week might actually help you in the long run. Also, if you're somebody who wakes up in the morning and you find that you have a lot of shine on your face and maybe it makes the sunscreen that you then put on look even shinier, doing something like this might help. Um, and it may help your cosmetics go on better. But I'm pretty sure that one has fragrance which you can be allergic to. These shower fizzies these I don't recommend. The reason these are not great is that when you're in the shower your skin is wet the penetration of the aromatherapy ingredients the eucalyptus and the fragrance is going to be greater to your eyelids and that can be sensitizing. Who's speaking of eyelids these I love um I've never actually used this one before, but I, I love using these at night to block out the light. I'm telling you, when it comes to your skin, sleep is probably the best thing that you can invest in. Seeing all these Instagram ads for various skincare products and everything, um, and you're worried that you're not doing enough, focus on sleep because that will take you much further in life than any face cream. Oh, these micro, they have microfiber hair wraps here now. These have made a huge difference for my hair. Well, not this specific brand, April Bath and Shower, although I'm sure it's fine. But I just love these. I use, I use one every night and it's really helped cut down a breakage. I used to use an old t-shirt, who remembers that? But I found as my hair got longer, the t-shirt was not enough to, to get all the water out. 
Um, so I started using these. And they help cut down on frizz and breakage. What is this? Charcoal infused exfoliating body scrubber. This type of thing may be helpful if you have keratosis pilaris to soften the bumps. Oh, here's an eye mask that you can chill if you get itchy, puffy eyes. Looks nice. Facial brushes. What is the deal with these? How do they compare to just using your fingers? The thing about facial brushes, whether it be something as simple as this or those fancy sonicating, spinning, whatnot, is they provide mechanical exfoliation. If you have acne prone skin, you may like that. You, you may find that it helps with reducing of clogging of the pores and maybe even potentially helps prevent breakouts. However, you have to be really conservative with how often you use these kinds of things because they are exfoliating the skin. Doing this too much, like more than once a week, um, can actually make your skin pretty irritated, especially if you're using this along with other exfoliants. It can be too much. Like some people think that they can use something like this every day to wash their face. Maybe they can handle that, but just be careful that you're not adding in additional exfoliants. Oh, jeez. I don't recommend that. Hopefully I don't have to go into too much detail as to why. Crystal waters. What else do we have in this Be Pure brand has these Smile Line gel patches that you can use to hydrate up fine lines around the mouth. I wish they made them like for your forehead because I find that wearing these can kind of help you if you are sitting at your computer reduce uh, the... These can kind of help you if you're like sitting at your computer, it can kind of help you not scowl as much. At least that was the case I found with those CO patches. They were a little bit more rigid though, then that might be more just like a hydrating gel. So here's another eye cream from Bolero Hibiscus Rose. Does this one have shea butter in it too? Yep, just a different scent. Ah, we have an antiperspirant here. Lightweight, long-lasting, fresh scent. Aluminum chlorhydrate. That is going to interact with your sweat, cause it to precipitate in the glands, the sweat glands, and plug up the sweat glands so you don't put as much sweat out. However, can be irritating on the skin. Use this at night uh, because it works better that way. Uh, to plug up the sweat glands and then the following morning if you find that antiperspirant is too irritating you can just th the following morning when you wake up just take a damp washcloth and wipe whatever's left on the skin off because it's already done its thing at that point it's not doing you any favors just sitting on your skin as you go throughout your day all it's going to do is rub off on your clothing there's a big difference between deodorant and antiperspirant. Antiperspirant is going to actually reduce the output of sweat. Antiperspirants actually reduce the output of sweat. They have aluminum salts in them. Again, precipitate with your sweat, cause the sweat gland to plug up. Ultimately, that reduces sweat output. Whereas deodorants are basically just scented sticks that you smear under your armpit in an effort to mask the odor. Um, odor is the result of the breakdown of sweat by bacteria that live under your arm. Deodorant typically is a perfume stick, which is why natural deodorant is just a gimmicky marketing thing, um, preying on people's fear of aluminum salts, which again are more than safe. But deodorant is never had aluminum in it really. Uh, deodorants don't have aluminum in them. Antiperspirants do, and there's no such thing as an aluminum-free antiperspirant. Dollar Tree has a cleansing balm, pineapple and aloe. This you could use for a double cleanse. Huh. Cocomil, propyl betaine is a mild surfactant. Fragrance. It doesn't look like it. Oh, it's hydrogenated castor oil. Cleansing face balm, pineapple and aloe. They also have a jelly serum with rosehip. Niacinamide. This is a scented niacinamide serum. Um, that's new. And then we also have green tea and lactic acid. Lactic acid is helpful if you have keratosis pilaris on the face. Um, it's also helpful for gently exfoliating, but it all kind of boils down to the formulation. They don't give us much info on that here. We have a hyaluronic acid serum here. 
methyl isothiazone. Oh, no, I would stay away from that. This is new from Dermasil, the oil-free daily facial cream. Um, this also has MI in it. I would stay away from that. Oh, so over here it looks like they have those same Freeman micro dart patches, but for the forehead. These are the ones that I have concern with, those little darts causing more irritation, but the ingredients overall don't seem too bad. Of course, anything can cause irritation, especially when you're poking it into your skin like that. Global Beauty has a lift and firm eye cream with collagen and peptides. Collagen and moisturizers, it just acts as like a humectant. Um, it doesn't actually put collagen in your skin. Oat peptide, that's likely going to be moisturizing. Milk protein extract, just moisturizing. Looks like Dollar Tree has some hydrocolloid patches. These are helpful for <clears throat> reducing the size of a pimple. And they help reduce the temptation to pick and squeeze. And they do help absorb some of the inflammatory exudate, ultimately diminishing the size of a pimple. Man, Dollar Tree's gotten in a lot of stuff, you guys. Be Pure Concentrated Facial Serum. And these little pop beads. Niacinamide serum. Looks like this Be Pure brand has a mint lip oil. So the mint can definitely lead to chelitis, aka chapped, irritated lips, but it may also aggravate perioral dermatitis because uh, mint and toothpaste can aggravate that. Um, but otherwise, this is probably gonna make your lips moisturized and glossy appearing. This is new, the Be Pure Under Eye Jade Roller. Um, I have a video about jade rolling. This, you could achieve something similar too by putting those cool compresses on and around the eyes to depuff. So there's that. These face ice rollers, they're pretty harmless. They can help minimize puffiness. Good to see they have one here now. That actually seems like a more reasonable size, too, in comparison to the ones that are, like, popularized from Amazon. They're much larger. I don't recommend this lip scrubber thing for softer lips because, see, when you have chapped, peely lips, the thought is that you peel off the peeling stuff and it's going to help it, but it doesn't. That ends up making things worse. Um, just use an emollient, like, well, you know, I'm going to say Vaseline, but... Even just putting some oil can help soften that skin because the thing is, the skin on your lips, it doesn't have that protective layer. So some of that is shedding and picking it off doesn't really help things out in the long run. Wow, is it just me? Dollar Tree really did not disappoint this time. Sometimes I don't find much in there, but this time they had a lot of new stuff like that new pure whatever brand, quite a bit. So I th thought it was a fun time. Anyways, you guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for coming along with me. If you like this video, check the end slate because I'm going to put my last Dollar Tree Shop With Me video. If you just click on the thumbnail, you can watch that one. But if you guys enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.